Took my makeup bag. What are you looking at me for? I thought you might know. Why? I don't need makeup to look good in the ring. Yeah. No, just a mask. <laughs> all right, all right. Quiet down, girls. Get ready for your matches. And you, Palestina, if I find you carrying sand again, I'll have you declared a public beach. <laughs> Sure, I get hit with sand every day. Who are you? I'm Jailbait, and I just love coming to the matches. They get me so excited. Are you here alone? Sort of, but I really need someone to take care of me. Everybody says I'm bad, but I'm real good. Well, maybe we can go out after the matches. I don't know. You have to get permission from Big Bad Mama, and she's real tough. Big bad mama? <laughs> How tough could she be? <laughs> Say what, boo? Hi, Mom. I was just talking about you. Yeah, I know you were. <laughs> Direct from the Riviera Hotel in the entertainment capital of the world, Las Vegas, Nevada, the independent network and winning productions present the fun and action-packed show, Glow! Gorgeous Ladies of Wrestling! We have got a tremendous show today, fans. Ashley Cartier takes on Ninotka in a $5,000 brass knuckles match. Susie Spirit locks up with Dementia. In a special no-disqualification handicap match, the California Doll and Little Egypt battle Matilda the Hun. And in our main event, Mountain Fiji squares off against the heavy metal sisters Chainsaw and Spike. We'll be right back with all the action. Housewives, you two are really giving me problems. You just don't understand, do you? When I said I want you to clean up the competition, I didn't mean scrub them with lie. <laughs> of gorgeous wrestler she is. I will present the brass knuckles to Ashley prior to the introduction of her opponent. Did you say brass knuckles? This is a brass knuckles match, Ashley, in which you're featured today. Nothing goes on Ashley Cartier's fingers that isn't gold. Your but gold knuckles. Any kind of gold. I don't care. Oh! 
But Ashley, you have to have the brass knuckles on and wrestle with them in order to win the $5,000. All of a sudden, the brass Ashley. is tarnished with gold. Ashley gonna Poor take Ashley. the brass knuckles, even though they're not gold, for the chance and possibility of winning the $5,000 today. Her opponent from Kiev, Russia, Colonel Manichka. want me by the look in your eye. Don't come too close if you are a spy. I'm deadly weapon, don't mess with me. Unless you're man enough to handle the KGB. Colonel Nanichka, here are the brass knuckles that are required for this event. What is this, Mr. McLean? Does Glow now go to Mafia? Are we going to be gangsters now? Yeah! This is the condition of the match that you must have. Listen, darling. Colonel Inochka is weapon all by herself. Yeah! I do not need the puny brass knuckles. You must accept them, Colonel Inochka. However, Ashley, please don't worry. I will donate the $5,000 to plastic surgeon to put back her face. Implying that the plastic surgeon has already worked on Ashley's face. Is Ashley going to take that sitting down? No. She goes to work on the Nazca right away. Pounding him with those brass knuckles. Minotka may have made a big mistake by declining to use her weapon. Pounding at her forehead here, and then slamming the forehead into the turnbuckle. Ashley boots her right out of the ring, and the crowd loves it. This Beverly Hills girl may look like she's all fluff, but she is one tough customer. Wow, a big flying drop kick sends Ninochka reeling to the cement floor. And Ashley follows her out. Motormouth Mike Morgan, the move and maneuver manual, monitoring today's mayhem. She grabs a drink from one of the fans and flings it into the Russian's face. This could be an error on her part. It may revive her opponent. Oh, but Ashley connects with a solid blow to her forehead. And throws her into the cement pillar. Then Notchka sinks to her knees, and Ashley pulls her back for more. Again, slamming her into the pillar. The Russian is slow to rise. And Aunt Kitty checks on her grappler. Ashley chats with her fans while Ninotka gets back to her feet. The two of them lock up, both trying to gain a point of control, pulling hair for leverage. And Ashley takes command. She sends her opponent into that pillar again. Between those brass knuckles and the concrete pillars, it's a wonder Ninotka can continue at all. Her forehead has absorbed some vicious blows. Ashley continues to attack. Oh, and now she mirrors her over onto the cement floor. She turns to the fans for their approval once more. Ashley announcing she's finished the rushing off, but the referee reminds her the pin must take place in the ring in this special match. A bloody but unbowed Ninotka makes it to her feet. And she flies at Ashley, catching her in the side of the head. Now both girls struggle on the ground. Ashley giving her opponent another shot to the head. Now she's scolding the Russian. 
<laughs> I don't know if that's such a wise maneuver. And then Oscar rolls her off. She has her by the hair, trying to grab an arm. And snip, mares her over onto the cement. Now Ashley feels some of what the Russian's been taking. Ashley lets her guard down for one second, and then Oscar was able to turn the match around. She slams her into David McLean's table. They lock up. And another mare takes her over. That scolding Ashley gave her only served to put the fight back in the Russian. But Ashley counters with a shot to the midsection. Her opponent forgot about those lethal brass knuckles. She fires another punch to her already wounded forehead. Now she's got it by the hair. And pays her back with a mare of her own. Ashley has her by the hair. She sets her up. And rams her into the ring post. Ninotchka's been bounced around this arena like a pinball machine. And her forehead has paid the price. Look at that blood. In rage, she jumps Ashley and pushes her into the audience. The two engage in a test of strength. Ninotchka's back pinned against the iron railing. But her superior strength wins out. She grabs Ashley, trying to mare her right in the middle of the crowd, but she pushes her off and over that railing. Now they both got each other by the hair. I tell you, fans, it hasn't been pretty. It's been a brutal match since the very beginning. Ashley kicks her off and into the pillar again. You have got to admire the Russian for this. She has been pummeled constantly and still makes it back to her feet. She truly is a fierce competitor. Ashley throws her back into the ring, hoping to end this match right now. She swings with those brass knuckles and the Russian ducks. She punches her and takes her down. Ninoshka has got a hand and immobilizes it with a boot. Ashley struggling ineffectually as the big Russian pulls the brass knuckles off of Ashley's grasping fingers. She yanks her by the hair and pulls it to a corner and hands the brass knuckles to Aunt Kitty. Ninoshka is finally free of that offending weapon that wounded her body and pride. Now Ninoshka wipes the blood from her forehead and smears it on Ashley as if it were some symbolic preparation for death. She pulls her back and into the bear hug. Ninoshka punishes her with a hold. Easing up slightly and then crushing her ribs once more. And again, and she dumps her down. The Russian pulls her into a combination full Nelson and body scissors, trying to shake up the Beverly Hills beauty further. Now she pulls her up and maintains the Nelson. And now, back in the corner, she applies another crushing bear hug. Ninoshka shrewdly switched tactics, making Ashley think she wouldn't have to face the dreaded bear hug again, only to have it clamped on once more. Now she looks as if she's trying to squeeze the life out of her. Ashley is almost unconscious. Flinging her to the mat. And Ninoshka's keen fighter's instincts tell her to go for the pin. And she gets it. The hatred in her eyes burns through the crowd. She'll remember this bitter victory. Of the brass knuckles match. And the $5,000 that goes along with the victory is Colonel Nanutska. Here's your money, Colonel Nanutska. You capitalist, I tell you what you've been doing.
So that's five thousand dollars. You don't want it, Nanitska. You don't want the. I want it. Once again, you trick me. You will pay. We'll be back in a moment, fans, with more of Glow, gorgeous ladies of wrestling. You know, Princess, I think you should have studied medicine. Why is that? Then you'd be a witch doctor. <laughs> <laughs> I'm David McLean, I'm your host. You've seen my glow girls coast to coast. You've seen them fight and take a stand. They've conquered all of TV land. I've signed them all, the wild and strange, and anyone in my price range. They make all arenas come alive. I may talk cheap, but I don't talk jive. This bout is a singles featured match from Massachusetts, managed by the infamous Aunt Kitty, Dementia! Aunt Kitty leads the way, and Dementia arrives in a trash bin. There's something fitting in that, I must say. Although Dementia probably regards it as an improvement over her customary cage. Her opponent today, from Philadelphia, PA, Susie Spirit! Susie Spirit flips for the crowd, and they've already flipped for her. The agitated hatchet woman charges with her axe and the referee must try and control the mask terror. She doesn't seem to understand the rules, but Aunt Kitty does, and she'll have to take that weapon away. Susie leaps into the ring, but Dementia seems more interested in her balloon. The bell has rung. Dementia still mesmerized by the rubber toy. Susie takes Dementia for an unscheduled flight with a high drop kick. The almost petrified wrestler makes an easy target for the cheerleader who takes her down. Susie follows up with a double arm drag. She presses her advantage and throws her into the corner like a huge rag doll. She works on those legs. Pulling, tugging. And sends Dementia flying. The cheerleader has been handling Dementia almost at will. She whips her into the ropes. And Aunt Kitty hands her the axe. She is now very armed and exceedingly dangerous. She charges with a weapon, and Susie's able to dart out of the way. Dementia is as mad as a hatter. Only Susie's quickness enabled her to avoid that swinging axe. And she strikes again, just missing it. The referee warns her with a disqualification, but he'd be better off talking to a wall, a rubber wall at that. The mad woman works that axe handle around Susie's neck. She is choking her, using her animal-like strength. She pulls her off her feet with the axe acting like a lever. The pressure on Susie's throat must be unbearable. The referee starts to count and Dementia actually breaks the hole. The ref is stunned, and so am I. But she goes back to choking. Dementia must think this is some sort of game. And Susie's neck hangs in the balance. But the game is over. Dementia has been disqualified. 
The referee is trying to break a grip while Susie gasps for air. Mention, uh, Susie's buried. Somebody, McLean and summoning Kitty. security and none too soon. And Kitty. They surround the silent maniac, breaking the axe free and finally taking her away. Hopefully back to the trash bin she came from. Controller Aunt Kitty, the winner of the match, Susie Spirit, Susie Spirit, the winner. We'll be back in a moment. Stay tuned. Waitress! Waitress! Yeah, what do you want? What's the safest thing to eat here? The silverware. <laughs> do, 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 do. Points to ponder. At Little Egypt, did stomach exercises? Would they be naval maneuvers? <laughs> if corn had something to say, would you lend an ear? <laughs> if Smokey Robinson married Max Bear, he'd be Smokey Bear. <laughs> Do, 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 do. <laughs> Ashley wears too much makeup in the ring. I know, she must work for Avon. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, gals. Tina Ferrari here with another tip on how to get the man you want. A lot of women are afraid to show their interest in a man. If you like him, ask him out. He'll be so flattered, it'll be an offer he can't refuse. So come on, ladies, take your best shot. You just might hit the bullseye. If the heavy metal sisters traveled by air, what would be your biggest concern? Survivors. <laughs> <laughs> Can you make a sentence using the word before? <laughs> yeah, two and two, before. <laughs> How come Hollywood and Vine never took up forgery? Because they can't write that small with spray cans. <laughs> in Las Vegas a while now and I finally met some country folk. They were dressed up real fancy like and they must have come from doing some calf roping because they told me they just tied the knot. <laughs> Don't fret about me none. I've got the good Lord watching over me and hog hollow in my heart. Love, Amy. want to visit the farmer's daughter? Yeah, when she's in the morgue. Match <laughs> 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 is a handicap match. Two persons against one. No disqualification. First, from Malibu, California, the California Doll! The California Doll's partner today, from Alexandria, Egypt, Little a favorite, Little Egypt dances in. 
between the California doll skates and Egypt's belly dance, there is a lot of poetry in motion in their corner. Their opponent today, from East Germany, managed by Aunt Kitty, at over 280 pounds, Matilda the Hun! My sentiments exactly. The woman is grotesque. Give me your best, I always say. They hit me hard, I bounce them away. I laugh so much, it makes me hurt. And then I make them go kaput! <laughs> Matilda roaring at the crowd. She is always yelling about something. This time it's her diet, and I say, what diet? There's a couple of projects for Weight Watchers if I ever saw them. You don't think you need to be on a diet? 280 pound Matilda the Hun. There she is, talking to a fox, Fritz, while the beauties go over their strategy. Matilda, still gesturing to the crowd. She takes forever to get into the ring, and the crowd doesn't like it. Little Egypt and the California doll try to match Matilda in size, and for once, she has to actually look up to an opponent. Egypt fires a slap, stunning the giant. She fires back, trying to topple the pair. She grabs Egypt's hair, but the dancing girl won't fall. So Matilda attacks downstairs, smashing the doll. The Middle Eastern beauty is left hanging. The Hun forces her down and throws her into her partner. They try to regroup while she taunts them. Egypt tries to duck under her, but she catches her foot. The doll jumps on the bed over Bavarian. She's trying to keep her head tight in a scissors hold. <laughs> Matilda spins her around and drops her heart. She goes to inflict more punishment, and the dancing girl jumps on her back. Yes. She gouges her eyes. Remember, this is no disqualification, so anything they do to wear the hun down is legal. The giant crushes her in a corner. The doll charges in with a headbutt, trying to upset that massive stomach. However, she seems to be using the hun to crush her own partner. Matilda snapmares Egypt. The doll sets up for another butt, but only the hun holds on to her. She's got her in position for a pile driver. Dog struggling to free herself. She knows it's a long way down. And she is slammed to the man. Oh. The giant throws in a few stumps. There is no science to Matilda's wrestling. She's as sloppy in the ring as her wardrobe is outside of it. She corners Egypt and windmills her around the ring. And into the ropes. She's lucky she didn't take off. Kicking her out of the ring, the Bavarian behemoth now closes in on the California doll. She's whipping her around just like a fallen partner. And the doll is hurled over the ropes. Both girls are outside the ring. <laughs> and even with Matilda in there alone, it still looks full. 
Matilda demands the ref disqualify her opponents. She may be an imposing figure, but even she can't change the rules of the match in midstream. The ref reminds her it's no disqualification match, but she's having none of that. She lifts him high in the air and a bone jarring body slam. And she tops it off with a big splash. The ref just had a ton of sauerkraut fall on him. The two beauties make their way back to the ring. Dull has a skating helmet on, and Egypt's got a pharaoh's headdress. Both headpieces hit their mark as the giant is repelled. Another one does the same. The girls may have Matilda in a bind by them using their heads. No, she catches the two of them on the third attempt. Oh, she slams their heads together. The girls rebound and surprise the giant with a double arm bar. They stretch out those flabby arms. Their teamwork has been exceptional so far. Twisting, yanking, pulling at those arms and wrists. They twist her arms and take the horn over. I haven't seen a German crash like that since the Hindenburg. Both girls take her by the hair. Again, perfectly legal in this match. Pulling her up despite her protestations. And they mirror her over. It looks like these two grapplers really did their homework today, fans. The girl from Alexandria steps up the attack. Bouncing down on the Hun's hefty gut. Again. But Matilda pulls her off, rolling her on the ground, trying for a pin. The doll breaks it up with a foot, but it appears her verbal attack is doing more damage. So Matilda turns her attentions to the California girl. She stomps towards her and oh, it takes a spill from that roller skate. And everyone knows the hardest thing about skating is landing. And when Matilda hits the mat, it's a six on the Richter scale. The pair congratulates themselves on effectively downing the giant while she struggles to her feet. She roars like some primitive beast, beating a hoof on the ground. Whatever she's emulating, I hope it's extinct. Egypt tries to kick her back, but Matilda grabs them both in a double bear hug. Lifting, crushing. Now she has them up and over. And yes, she fireman carries her two victims to the center of the ring and dumps them right there. Grabbing a leg from each one. Ooh, she painfully peppers their thighs with kicks from those gigantic boots. Now Matilda stretching those legs back, putting tremendous pressure on their leg muscles. Don't forget that is almost 300 pounds on the attack and all of it. Nasty. She takes their other legs over and turns them into a pin. Yes, the teammates have become a small package with a big, ugly bow. The winner of the no disqualification match, Matilda the Hun. We'll be back in a moment. Stay tuned. Hello, Vladimir. Did you get the information we need? Good. Let me have it. Very thin with ridges, lightly salted. Vladimir, you idiot. You are supposed to get the design for the new microchip, not potato chip. <laughs> In the Kremlin hears of this, your backside will have more footprints than Hollywood's Chinese theater. <laughs> match is a handicap feature match, two persons against one. 
boat from Samoa first, accompany her sister, Little Fiji. And her sister at over 350 pounds, Mountain Fiji. I'm not mean nor abrupt, but get me mad, I will erupt. All the youngsters, flaunt your pride. Mountain Fiji's on your side. Mountain Fiji, before I introduce your opponents, I have a special surprise for you. This was delivered to me from your fans and it is to be presented to you in honor of your success here with GLOW from all of your fans and supporters home in Samoa. They're so proud of you. Wait a minute, Spike sneaks into the ring and grabs the gift of Fiji and now Chainsaw has got a rope around her neck. Spike batters them both with a native totem pole. Chainsaw drop kicks Fiji into the rope. I tell you fans, I never thought I'd see Chainsaw execute a legal wrestling maneuver, much less anyone that required any agility. Motormouth Mike Morgan monitoring moves and maneuvers, and this one is already going full tilt. The crazed sisters have Mountain Fiji tied up in the ropes. Totally ignoring the referee, Spike keeps Fiji in a tight grip. And Chainsaw seems to be playing some deranged game with that rope. She's trying to get it over the beam. Failing, fortunately. The effort, however, is unceasing. When it comes to murder and mayhem, these two will stop at nothing, and she's got it over the beam, and now they have the big Samoan at their mercy. A word which is not in their vocabulary. A vocabulary consisting mostly of screams. Spike pushes aside the referee in Little Fiji. Chainsaw anchors a rope to the ring. They want the mountain held captive for their evil schemes. Fiji is choking on that rope around her neck. Again, Spike disposes of her sister. Now she's got that ancestral totem. Chainsaw has her pet weapon at the ready. Uh oh. Oh no, this is despicable. They're destroying the hand carved treasure. Nothing is sacred to these two vile creatures. Hacking it into pieces, right there in the center of the ring. And now Spike has got the torch, brandishing it. Is she threatening Fiji with it? No. No. It's going. Look at that hot blue flame. This is a pull. Spike is setting the totem ablaze. I apologize, fans. These two have no morals whatsoever and no respect for others' feelings. They are totally disgusting. Mesmerized by her own destruction. Spike brandishing the torch and now perching on the turnbuckle like a vulture, ready to attack its prey. Chainsaw boots little Fiji and Spike does the same to the ref. The wild eyed Spike yanks handfuls of the mountain's hair. Still holding that torch. No, look at this. Chainsaw body slams little Fiji. Not even in the match. Oh, and now a big splash on little Fiji. Her sister is all tied up and can't come to a rescue. Look, Spike gives her sister a three count. Can they possibly believe in those twisted minds of theirs that they've won this match by pinning the wrong person? The referee informs them the pin does not count. They have to beat Mountain Fiji, their true opponent. Unhappy with that news, Spike turns on the official. 
Chainsaw grabs his glasses away, brandishing them for the crowd, placing them on the ground. She stomps on them. And tosses the pieces to the crowd. These two are an optician's nightmare anyway. She pushes little Fiji down and comes back to the ref, a big blow to the stomach. Spike curls him to the ropes and chainsaw peels him to the canvas. The official is used to keeping an eye on the action, but he never thought he'd be part of it, especially in his myopic state at the moment. Wait, what is this? Fiji is working away free of the restraints. Ooh, Spike kicks the man low. They just about wiped the floor with the referee. And I hope that last comment didn't give them any ideas. Now, Fiji pulls the heavy metal maniac off the battered official. And she kicks Spike off as well. Fiji has chainsaw up and tosses her to the canvas hard. Spike threatens her with that torch. But she bats it away. She has a high up. And slams her into the turnbuckle. Maybe trying to knock some sense into her. Fiji heaves her right out of the ring. Chainsaw is back on her victim, but the avenging Samoan has her up and body slams her right in the center of the ring. She tries to attend to the stricken ref. And Chainsaw goes after her sister. The mountain will have none of that and she breaks it up. Finally, the belt, and none too soon. Security, you gotta come in here and take the heavy metal sisters out of here. Take McLean the heavy metal calls sisters for security. Out of security. The two women have gone berserk yet take again. Fiji. Take them out of here. Security approaches very warily, and rightfully so. Finally, they surround the two lunatics. But Spike gets away. Now Chainsaw flees as well. I don't know where they're going. <laughs> but if it's in the opposite direction from this boot, I'm all for it. Mountain Fiji! I heard Mountain Fiji was offered a job with the Los Angeles Dodgers. Yeah, as the team bus. Let's <laughs> <laughs> have with Nuchka. Hey, Tara. What is that you're reading? Glow Magazine. Wow. Beautiful, huh? Look. Don, here's an awfully nice picture of you. Terrific. Look at this one. But wow, even a better picture of me. For the hottest moves in town, dial 1-900-660-GALS for GLOW, those gorgeous ladies of wrestling. A dollar fifty the first minute, 35 cents each additional minute. Does Dementia have a favorite appetizer? Yeah, chopped liver! <laughs> <laughs> that Susie spirit is so damn cute! Yeah! She could make a Muppet puke! <laughs> Palestina really has a chip on her shoulder. That's not a chip. That's her head. <laughs> Ashley cried like a baby over that break she suffered. Did she break her arm? No, worse. Her nail. <laughs> I heard Ninochka was an ugly ballerina. Yeah, whenever she danced, they called it Swine Lake. <laughs> uh, what do you want, Aunt Kitty? You know, there are others, David. 
Hollywood already sees two guys regularly. Yeah. Her psychiatrist and her parole officer. <laughs> 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 